Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today what I have in front of me here is a G450 Media Gateway. I'll give you a quick rundown of the gateway. Two Ethernet ports here for LAN, two Ethernet ports here for WAN. Probably not going to worry about these. We have a compact flash slot that we can uh, use to store announcements. Um, and then quite importantly, we have a services port that we can use to uh, connect to the gateway on. It's an IP connection. So what we have to do is to connect into this, we need to connect our PC or our laptop to this services port. A crossover cable may be required, but in most of the cases I've experienced, um, a normal straight through Ethernet cable um, is sufficient enough to be able to you know, set that connection up. And then on our laptop or our PC, we just need to give ourselves an IP address of 192.168, sorry, 192.11.13.5, slash Verti subnet mask, so that's 255.255.255.252. And then we connect to this by SSHing using a terminal emulator like PuTTY um, on 192.11.13.6. And we'll log in with root and whatever our root password is. Now we may need to uh, factory default this gateway. Um, if we don't know the root password, but that can be easily uh, done from it inside. If we have a look at these other slots, we've got this slot here for our S8300. We've also got these other slots here for our S8300. Uh, for those of you that aren't uh, familiar with what an S8300 is, it's basically um, a processor card. And uh, what you can do is you can install Communication Manager on that. You can use it as a small communication manager for maybe a, a small branch office, or it can be used as a local survivable processor if your core communication manager, um, you know, it goes down or there's a network problem or something like that. And then we have these slots here for our multimedia cards. So you can put a DS1 card in here for E1 or T1 primary rate. Um, you can also use a BRI card for ISDN2. Um, and you can also get cards for CO trunks and also analogs. And if I just take this front panel out, so this whole front thing here will actually, this will unscrew. And then what we can do is we can, we can force the main board out of this. And we'll just take a look inside and I'll show you what we have in there. So the media gateway is used for announcements and also media resource for our telephone calls. If we pull this out, we've got some RAM here and then these. As you can see, there's four slots and I have three of them populated. These are MP80s. So these are our voice DSPs, our media processors. We can have four in here. I had three, so that gives me a total of 240 media channels. Slide that back in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, take this away now and we're gonna go and power it up. We're gonna connect to it. We're gonna factory default it. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to give it an IP address and we're going to connect it to our communication manager. So let's go and take a look at that now. So I've got my G450 here along with all my servers. And if we have a look at this card, so I've pulled the card out now. If we have a look at it, what we'll see here is we've got this little jumper. And we've got this little, this little connector here. So to default this, what we want to do is we want to take our jumper and we'll want to put our jumper on here and see what I'm doing. Put it on there. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to slide this back in here. And then from the back of the unit, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug some power in. If I can, uh, I can move around here, just move that monitor out of the way a lot of equipment in here you see so i'm just gonna put the phone down for a second as it's uh it's a lot easier to do with two hands and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to plug the power in at the back so that is now powering up and then whilst it's doing that let me just make sure this is pushed in all the way which it is or it wasn't to begin with you know not going to do that because we're going to have to take it out again in a minute anyway but as you can see my services port now has a link and i'm going to go and configure my pc up to uh, have the uh, correct ip address so we can connect in on that services port so what i do is i usually let this uh, sit for about five minutes 
and then I power it off and I just uh, move the jumper back to uh, its original position. So I'm just going to go and do that now. I'm going to leave this running for five minutes and I'm going to go and uh, set the IP addresses up on the PC. So G450 is still powered up. What I'm going to do is take the uh, power out the back. So that is now completely, completely isolated. And I'm just going to pop this out again. And this little jumper here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that over here. So the jumper's in there, but it's not actually it's not actually making any contact with any pins other than this first one. So it's not it's not doing anything, but it's it's in there in case we ever need to use it again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide that back in so it's in there nice and firmly. Do these up so there's no chance of it being pulled out. And then what we can do is we can go and boot this thing back up give it a few minutes and we should be able to connect to it on the uh, on the services port and then we can connect it to the network and do whatever we need to do to it as well the other thing I'm going to do with, um, just quickly off camera is I'm going to connect uh, this port 5 here which is the first Ethernet port I'm going to go and connect that to my uh, my switch and I'm just going to go and get it connected to the network and then we can configure it up and program it in communication manager Okay, so we're back on the PC. What I need to do now is uh, just go into Network and Sharing Center and change my adapter settings. And it looks like it's Ethernet Adapter 8. And yes, I do have a lot of uh, network adapters here, but it looks like it's going to be Network Adapter 8. So what I'm going to do is just drag this over here, go to Properties, and I'm just going to IP version 4. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to give my PC 192.11.13.5 with a slash 30 subnet mask on 252. I don't need to worry about the default gateway and then what I'm going to do is just click OK to that. And I have a ping run in here as well. I'm just going to close that off. And I'm just going to leave that running. So I'm going to leave that running. I'm just going to go back over to the uh, to the other camera, and I'm going to uh, take the front module out of the uh, G450, and I'm just going to move that jumper back to its original position, and then I'm going to uh, boot the G450 back up, and hopefully we should be able to get on the uh, in on the services port. Okay, so we're back on the PC again, and uh, our gateway has just started pinging after uh, after five minutes of uh, connecting the power in the back of it. So what we can do is uh, we can should be able to putty to 192.11.13.6 we'll accept that and we should be able to log in with root and then also root as the password and then what we have to do now is we need to change the password so what we've done in this process is we factory resetted the gateway completely and what we we'll want to do is uh, we'll just want to run through this this setup here and in fact, one important thing that I was supposed to do that I didn't do in the video was uh, connect it to my LAN. So I'm going to do that now, actually, whilst I'm on camera. I'm going to log into my switch. And uh, what we can do is we can just set up that port really quickly. And to avoid me having to get underneath my desk to uh, work out what port it's connected to, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enable terminal monitor on my switch. So when I plug this port in, it will tell me, or should tell me, what port I'm connected to. And I'm connected to Gigabit Ethernet 6. So I'm just going to configure that here. And I'm going to be lazy and just copy that. So what we can do is we can configure that. And I'm going to put this on. I'm just going to uh, get rid of my trunk configuration if there is any. And also get rid of this as well. And I'm just going to configure it up as an access port. And I'm going to put it on VLAN 5. So now we've got that out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give the IP address of my gateway. Uh, 10.5.1. Uh, we'll give it 9 I think. That's a free IP address on my network. So... 
let's concentrate on this for a second here. So if we move these out of the way, what we'll do is we'll concentrate on this. So this is the configuration script that basically it's like a wizard on the gateway that we can run through. So the script will provide you basic gateway connectivity configuration. So this is like the minimum that you'll need to get this gateway up and running on the network. So do you want to continue? Yes, we want to continue. Default VLAN, well, I'm using an untagged port, so we can just leave it as one. Enable IPv4, yes. The IP address of this, as I said, is 10.5.1.9, and our subnet mask is slash 24, so we can just leave that as default, but if you need to put something else in, then obviously you can put it in here. Like so, 255, whoops, 255.255.255.0, and then my gateway is actually 10.5.1.1. So 10.5.1.1. And then do we want to enable IPv6? No, because I'm not using that. But if you do need to use it, you can enable it from here. And then the MGC controller is going to be the IP address of my communication manager, which is 10.2.1.160. The host name, we'll just call this lab G450. And then the gateway will save those parameters in the startup config and then reset. Do you want to continue? Yes, we'll continue. That is all good. What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm just going to go over to my VMware. So I'll we'll just open this up here and we'll stick that in there. I'm just going to log into my VMware. I recently upgraded my lab as well. Which is why I now have vCenter. So I've got hold of, a, hold of some new servers recently. This one was the old one, and I moved all the VMs from this one to this one because this is a bit more of a powerful server. But anyway, so CM01A is up. That's not the one I want. I'm going to shut this down. Where are we? Shut that down. This is the one I want here. Power this one up. System manager's up. I suppose I could power these up as well. Not that I'm going to use them for this moment in time, but we can power those up. And uh, this guy as well, we can power that up. I'm not going to power the media server up. And the reason why I'm not going to power the media server up is at the moment, if I use a via 1x communicator, I mean, it's not going to log in just yet anyway. So you can see the gateway was pinging because I had it on the network and in fact I'm just going to make sure the communication manager is up 10 to 1 160 and that's pinging quite nicely I'm just going to log into it real quick and make sure that it's all up and that looks like it is fine to me Communication manager's down, so it's still loading itself up, but that's fine. What will happen is, is um, it should be up in just a moment. So getting back to the gateway, let's have a look. If we go back to, where is it? My command prompt, which is down here. Let's try and ping that gateway again. So the gateway is not up yet. Communication manager's up, so what I should be able to do is uh, let's get rid of that. Log into site administrator. With a bit of luck, I should be able to whoops, log in using my normal credentials. Okay, cool. So if we do a list, do list media server you'll see that my media server is pending in service I don't know why it's reporting that because the media server isn't actually uh, it's not up so I don't know why it thinks it's uh, it's there or pending in service but it should be uh, out of service but anyway we're not going to worry about that and if we do uh, list media G you'll see there's no uh, gateway in there so I'm going to wait for this gateway to uh, come online so we'll just give that Give that a second.
So it's a bit of a boring process having to sit and wait for this to uh, to finish, but should uh, should start responding to that ping uh, anytime soon, and then we can uh, we can log in. If there's something else that we need to do on the gateway to be able to uh, be able to connect it, but you'll uh, you'll see that in just a minute when this uh, and here we go started to ping. So what we're going to do now is we're not going to go in on the services port. We're going to go in on its actual IP address. So 10.5.1.9 in here. We'll log in with root and our password that we recently changed and there we have it what i like to do from here onwards is i like to add a user so add uh, user if we just tab this or it will tell you the format we need to do so username password and then we need to do the access type can be read write read only or admin so what i'm going to do is username is going to be uh, we'll just call it admin for the time being the password i'll set it to uh password one two three four uh, one two three dollar and then the access type type will just be um admin whoops username admin and then we need to do password and then our password and the account is added Every time we add something in here, we need to do a copy run start. Well, we don't need to do it every time, but once we've finished all the changes on the gateway, we need to do a copy run and config, start up config. And for those of you that are familiar with Cisco devices like the uh, routers or switches, will uh, be very familiar with this uh, this sort of process here. It's the, uh, it's the same concept, same principle. So yeah, just make sure that we do that every time. Otherwise, what will happen is there'll be a power cut and any changes we've made on the gateway will then be lost. So make sure you uh, copy that config or save that config every time we do it. So what we want to do now is um, we can come out of here. Oh, not like that. That wasn't what I had planned. In fact, what we can do is we can test our, our new account. So if we log in with admin and our new account, you'll see that we're logged in. So what we want to do from here onwards is we want to type in show system show system and we need to make a note or we need to copy this little serial number here and we're going to need to use this you notice that my firmware here as well is quite old 3126 i would say this is a good few years old so we're going to need to upgrade that at some point anyway but for the moment um this video just demonstrates how we can get the g450 connected so what we want to do in our gateway or in our communication manager is if we do a list media g there's nothing to listen to the uh, system. So we can either do an add media G next, or we can specify a number of the gateway. So we could do add media gateway 10, for example, and that would add media gateway 10. Or we can just do add media G next, and what it should do is it start from one. So the type is a G450. The name, we can call it anything, but I'm going to call it a lab G, G450. And then this is where the serial number comes in play. So we need to put that serial number from the show sys. So this serial number here needs to go in there. And then we need to put it in our network region. Our link encryption can be any PTLS or TLS. Or we can set it to none. But I normally just leave that as default. And then the recovery rule, obviously, if we have some recovery rules, we can, uh, we can put them in there. Location is going to be one for me. Mutual authentication can be optional. We can set it to required. And then if we go on the next page, what we could do is if we had any um, if we had any uh, multimedia modules like our MM 711s or 710s, any of those, we could we could specify them in here. So we could do an MM 710 in here, for example, for a DS1. But I don't have any of those, so I'm not going to worry about it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save that, and we'll do a save trans all. And then what we should see on here is if we press enter, you'll see that before my media gateway had a question mark against it. And now it has uh, its actual host name. So what that means is that's registered and we should be able to log in my extension and that all works. And I get dial tone as well. So that is how we set up a, um, a G450 media gateway for call processing. And if we do a list media G in here, you'll see that my gateway is registered in network region one. It reports its firmware version um, and the IP address of the gateway and also the uh, the processor Ethernet of the communication manager that it's, uh, it's registering to. So that's how we do that. 
Um, I know it's a short video. Hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully it gave you an insight to the uh, G450. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for some more videos. A lot more coming up uh, in the future. And if you haven't already, smash the crap out of that like button and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel.